Are you guys ready to try some over-the-top Texas-style chili? Yeah, with no beans, that's what that means. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do to get started on our over-the-top chili is get our onion and our jalapeno diced up. All right, the first thing we want to do is get our Traeger fired up to 250, 260, 275 degrees. Anywhere you want to, it doesn't matter. Now, I went ahead when I fired mine up and went ahead and put my Lodge cast iron Dutch oven on here. And just because my grill grates was just maybe a tad bit dirty, I put down a piece of foil to set my pot on so my pot didn't get any, any black stuff or anything on the bottom to mess the counter up when I take it off. Now, I'm going to start off with a little bit of olive oil here. And I'm going to say that's probably a tablespoon. I'm going to go ahead and get my diced up whole onion and my whole bell pepper in here. Now, I de-seeded my jalapeno to make it a little less hot. You can leave it in there if you like your chili just screaming. It's completely up to you. Now, another thing that I'm not going to do, I'm not putting any beans in this chili today. This is going to be an over-the-top chili with no beans. And so, if you like beans, you can surely add two cans of beans of your choice. It's completely up to you. Me, however, I'm not. Now, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and season that with a little bit of garlic jalapeno rub. Just a little bit in there like that. I'm gonna give this a little bit of beef rub here. All right. And then, of course, we're gonna give it just a little bit of the W Sauce Fireshire. Now this is really gonna amp your flavors up just a little bit. I'm only gonna use about a tablespoon in here. That's it, that's really all you need. It's completely up to you. You can add a little bit more if you want another depth of flavor. Now, I'm gonna get the grill lid shut, get our ground beef and our pork formed into a ball, and get ready to put it over the top of these onions and peppers. All right, we're gonna start off with three pounds of ground chuck. You can use whatever you like, and I've got one pound of mild breakfast sausage. Now, I'm honestly just gonna take this, guys, and mix this in, kind of form it a little bit, roll it. I mean, I'm not trying to be super neat with it. Just kind of get it all mixed in and incorporated. Now, before I kind of form this into a ball here, I am gonna take and put some garlic jalapeno and beef rub on this. So let me go ahead and pull one glove off so I don't contaminate anything. Always want to season your meat, right? We're just building layers upon layers of flavors is what we're doing. Now, kind of mix this up again, fold it over. I'm gonna take and kind of flatten this thing out, kind of like so, kind of big overstuffed patty. Of course, I'm gonna take and drop a little more seasoning on it. Now, again, you can use a barbecue rub of your choice. It's completely up to you. I'm just sticking with these traditional flavors is all I'm doing. Now, turn that over. A little bit on this side. And a little bit of garlic jalapeno here. Now, once you get all that kind of patted in that meat, I'm gonna take a cooling rack here. All right, I'm gonna set this ball right on top of this cooling rack, just like so. Now that I get that on there, I'm gonna take it over to my chili pot and put it right over the top of the chili so all that grease and all that fat can drip in there and give us that traditional chili taste that we all love. Let's get it over here to our Traeger and get it over the top of these diced jalapenos and onions. All right, now that we're over at our grill, you can see our onions and peppers. They, they're not starting to get translucent because we've got it at such a low temp. I'm just really just smoking these onions and peppers, but I'm gonna take and lay that right over the top of that pot. And you can see everything's gonna drip in this pot here. Now I'm gonna get the grill lid shut, let this go for at least an hour, and I'm not even gonna look at it. Then I'm gonna bump the grill up to 325 degrees, let it go another hour, to an hour and a half, and then I'm gonna crush that ground beef up, throw it in here, add my other ingredients, and let it simmer for a couple of more hours. We're gonna have one hell of a pot of chili. 
All right, our chili has been on right a little over an hour, and so I'm gonna get in here and look at it. You can see our beef is starting to take on a good bit of smoke. The color's starting to change on it. Now, we're already hitting about 107 degrees in the center of that. You know, I'm gonna move this off of the top here, set it down. You can see our onions and, and peppers here are starting to turn a little bit. I'm gonna get in here. Starting to soften up a little bit. They've been on a little over an hour with just that Worcestershire in them. And so now, I wanna take and add some ancho chili powder to this. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of cumin. Now, you can always go back and add more chili powder if we need it. So once we get that in there, I'm gonna take one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes and pour in. Now, I'm also a Rotel guy, so I'm gonna use one can of original Rotel. Now I'm gonna use a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. I'm gonna use a six ounce can of tomato paste. I'm gonna keep mixing all that up. 14 ounce can of beef broth. I'm only gonna add about half of that can and then I'm gonna crack open a good old Miller Lite. And y'all know we going with that, that beer up in that chili right there. Whole can of beer. Get this all stirred up here. I may wanna put back on my glove here to move this meat back over this. I almost grabbed it. Going back over the top. I'm gonna close the grill lid. And now, I'm gonna turn this chili up. Remember, we was running 275 degrees. I'm gonna turn this chili up to 325, 330. And now I'm gonna let it go an hour and a half. Now after about one hour, I'm gonna check it, see where my ground beef is at. If it's ready to be put into there and crushed up and all done up inside the tomatoes and all that to finish making the chili, that's what we're gonna do. But we're gonna let our ground beef cook and take on as much smoke as possible before we crumble it into our liquid mixture. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're back in here. One more hour has passed. So that means our ground beef ball with pork has been smoking two hours. Now we're gonna be hitting about 135 degrees, 130, something like that. I'm gonna take my trusty spatula here from Traeger. I'm gonna take this ground beef ball, get that off of there. Move my rack to the side and I'm gonna set that ground beef and sausage right in there like that. Now, why did I do that, you ask? I'm gonna take my trusty tool here and start breaking it up. All right, once we get it all stirred up, I'm gonna get my grill lid closed for about another 30, 45 minutes, let it all incorporate, and I'm gonna taste it. Now, what am I doing that for? I can already tell by looking at it, I'm probably gonna add more chili powder to it and more cumin and everything. And the reason that is, you can always go and add seasoning, but you can never take none away. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes to simmer, let some flavors marry, come back, taste it, and adjust from there. All right, our chili has been cooking about three and a half hours. Let's get in here and I want you to look at this chili as it's simmering. As you know, you could simmer chili all day long if you wanted to, completely up to you. Let's get in here, take a look at it. Oh, look at that. That's when you know it's good. That grease is coming to the top. That's what you're looking for in your chili. Everything's rendering out. That right there is honestly gonna be a great pot of chili. But before I even get in this chili, this is just something that I do. I'm gonna go get some paper towels, a disposable plate, gonna lay it in here, gonna soak up some of that grease on top. Just a little bit, not all of it, just a little bit. We don't need all that fat in there. And then I'm gonna stir it up we're gonna get ready to eat some chili. All right guys, our chili is off the grill. It's been four hours cooking on the Traeger. Now this over the top chili is really easy to make. All we did was dump everything out of our cans into our Dutch oven once our onions and jalapenos started getting a little bit translucent, which was about an hour after the ball started smoking on top of the Dutch oven here. So I took three pounds of ground beef, one pound of country regular mild sausage, kind of molded together. I used ancho chili powder, some cumin, some of my garlic jalapeno rub, some beef rub. And so I've tasted this and tried it. The only thing you can do if you prefer, if you want your chili a lot more darker red color, 
you can add more chili powder. It's gonna impact the flavor just a little bit more, but this is how me and my family like it right here. It's got plenty in it, it's got that good chili back end spice to it. That's the way we like it. So I'm gonna get in here, and you can see that I left this meat kind of chunky and hearty. This is why we call this a Texas style over the top chili, because it's really hearty. This has no beans in it. All of your tomatoes and everything is cooked down. And then you can add more liquid if you want. You can use that whole can of beef broth, the whole 15 ounce can, instead of using half of it and your whole beer to have a little more liquid in here. Depends on what you like your chili consistency to be. Now that I've got me a big old bowl scooped out, y'all know already I gotta have me some of that shredded cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese to go right on top here. When you get that dumped on, you know I gotta have some more onion on top. I'm a huge onion eater. For anybody that didn't know that, I absolutely love me some onion. And I can tell you, that is a bowl of chili I can get behind right there. Not one thing missing, that's a sleeve of crackers. I gotta find that and a glass of good old sweet tea and I'm ready to eat. All right guys, I've recapped everything. The last thing to do is get in here and try a bite of this chili. Now I'm going in for a good old bite here. Oh yeah. Now you can always add a little sour cream on top of this. Let's give her a try. That is so good. The good beefy taste, that cumin, that ancho chili powder shining through. Mm. That beef took on a nice smoky taste from the Traeger and the roll oak charcoal pellets that we use today. Push this chili over the top. If you like what we're doing, be sure to try it out. Follow us along on our channel. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, and of course, YouTube. I'll see you next week with another video. <laughs> Damn, it's chili good. Y'all better get a bowl of this while you're